Oh boy, it's Ned Kelly time. My name is Isaiah Wright. I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kelly in the biggest boxing match of the 1800s. I can confirm that this is a juicy pod. If you're new here, we're trying to get our host PY onto the chase. To make our application stand out, we're looking for 400 Spotify ratings. So while you're here, pausing to give us a rating can help put PY on the map. The boys also have an exciting announcement. Well, today is a very exciting episode of the podcast. Next to Tim Amatic, we're looking at probably the biggest celebrity of Australian history. Mm. We are looking at Ned Kelly today. Oh boy. Nice. I've been waiting for this one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I feel like... Like my primary school self is absolutely buzzing right now because I feel like the first time you hear about Ned Kelly in primary school, you're like, this guy's sick. Like, <laughs> he's got this cool bucket on his head and it deflects bullets. And like, he probably didn't sing the national anthem at assembly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is very exciting to be able to do a Ned Kelly one. I'm also a little bit like, oh, are we doing this too early? Like, is, are we going to look back in a couple of years' time and be like, we, we were never the same? Like, we peaked in autumn of 2024. <laughs> We are yeah. looking at Ned Kelly. I feel today. like when we first started and you asked, oh, any topics you want us to maybe look at? And I was like, Ned Kelly. Mm. Not yet, son. Yeah. <laughs> We're too early in the game. <laughs> the other reason why it's also really exciting is that we actually have a sponsor for today's podcast. Oh boy! Today's podcast yeah. is brought to you by Ned Kelly Armored Outlaw. Basically, it's a game. It's a one level game. And it is built around the crescendo of this podcast. And I've got good news. There will be no diminuendo in today's <laughs> podcast. A musical reference for you there. For those playing the, along at home. The crescendo, if you know the story, you'd know where the crescendo of this podcast is going to fall, i.e. the Siege of Glen Rowan. Ned Kelly Armored Outlaw is a game where you get to play the Siege of Glen Rowan and actually get to alter the course of history. Mm. So it's only $1.99 US on Steam. We'll put a link in the description below. Head on over, give it a download, give it a go and see if you can alter the course of Ned Kelly's history. And also at the same time... What an opportunity. Yeah. What an opportunity. Yeah. At the same time, get in contact with the Mystery M History Podcast on Twitter. Tweet your experiences of the game. And in two weeks' time, when we come back to do our next podcast, we will share a couple of people's experiences. So chance mm. to get on the pod, chance to get your name out there, give yourself mm. a shout out. <laughs> give us a screenshot, share your experience playing Ned Kelly Armoured Outlaw. And we'll come back to the game as we get to the siege of Glen Rowan. Fantastic. How exciting. I, Cam, I think you put it well before when we were off air when you said, you know, if a, a history podcast tells you to pay $80 for a, for a video game, you'd go, mm, okay. But $2, all of a sudden, now you're speaking my language. We've, it's, got, we've got just a fun afternoon sorted. I mean, it's more than a soft serve these days. <laughs> like. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a rainy afternoon here in, here in, in Sydney where we're recording and. I think it'd be perfect for just on the lounge, you know, a bit yeah. of Ed Kelly action. Cup of tea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, that's the Brit in you speaking up there. <laughs> True. Yeah. No, Kelly, yeah. Kelly would not endorse the cup of tea because the Kelly family, any guesses where their family background is from? Irish. Yeah. Correct. Did you just know that? So, okay. I've watched two Ned Kelly movies. The one in it's the early 2000s, Heath Ledger plays Ned Kelly. And uh, is the other really? one where Mick Jagger plays Ned Kelly? Mick Jagger? No, I haven't seen that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Orlando Bloom is also in it. And uh, the Australian girl, maybe Kate, Kate Blanchett. I could be wrong. So I watched that movie and it was pretty good. I didn't mind it. Then I watched another movie recently and it was it's on a streaming service. I'm not going to name them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's sponsored by... Uh, Ned Kelly Armored Outlaw. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's called The True History of the Ned Kelly Gang. There was nothing true about this. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it took like a very, oh, I don't know the right word. It took a very... Anachronistic? Like an anachronism is something where it's out of chronological, like it doesn't, like, mm. like where you've got Hamilton, where Hamilton's black in oh, the musical. Yeah. yeah. Like that sort of thing? Yeah, well, it was just kind of wrong, I guess. Uh, <laughs> and I mean, Nate Kelly didn't even have like a beard. So, <laughs> and the guy who played Nate Kelly was the guy, I don't know his name, from 1917. I haven't seen the movie, but oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I've the seen the trailer of from that. them so, running across the trenches. That's about all yeah, I know about so that movie. I'm pretty sure he's British. And Scandal. Yeah, it was a shambles. I think there was a ki there was a kid involved, and uh, yeah, I mean the Heath Ledger one had a love interest as well. That was probably maybe a bit of a, a side story, but hey, maybe we'll find out. Anyway. So, fortunately, no, 
No so, historical accuracy, inaccuracies in uh, Ned Kelly Armored Outlaw, of course. Yes. Yeah. You're looking to consume. Well, the only inaccuracies are the ones you can create. <laughs> <laughs> True, yeah. yeah. But I guess like the early life, the family start of the gang and the, uh, the, the crescendo battle was all kind of a part of that story. And naturally, mm. I, I read a few, I read a Wiki, Wikipedia page or two. Mm. So we go to Ned Kelly's father. Yeah, he's Irish. He's Irish. Yeah. Now, contextually, this is important. This is pre World War One, so pre the split of Ireland. So Ireland is subjected under the control of the British Empire. Religiously, there's a big divide. Obviously, most of Ireland, particularly you near know, the first south you go, the more Catholics you get, whereas Britain is Church of England. And so you've got this Protestant Catholic divide, and then you've also got the nationalistic divide as well. But Ireland is under the control of Britain in the 1800s. Now, Ned Kelly has a dad. His name is Red Kelly. Oh. Do you reckon he was called the Red Kelly Black Snake in school? <laughs> <laughs> Do you reckon he got the nickname Red Rock Kelly on his year 12 jersey? <laughs> is it... Is Ned like short for Edward or something? Yeah, yeah okay. I Is believe- it the same with Red? Redwood? Redwood? <laughs> I think it's Redmond. Oh, Redmond. Redmond. Okay, cool. <laughs> so Red Kelly got caught stealing some pigs in Ireland. Okay. So he got deported to Van Diemen's Land uh, where he had to do some time. Mm-hmm. Eventually, he leaves Van Diemen's Land and he settles in the new colony of Victoria. That's only really popped up in the 1850s. While in Victoria... He goes to work on a farm. Now, here's another layer to kind of the British-Irish divide here as well. In Australia in the early 1800s, we had something called the squatocracy. So... Just just a good word. It is a good word. (laughs) Squatocracy. Sounds like like a gym. (laughs) (laughs) So the squatocracy was basically squatters having a much higher social class than the other people. So you go back to the early 1800s, the first fleet is now a generation old and you've got a second generation of people coming to Australia. The squatters are the ones that are like, oh, free land. Let's just go. Let's you know, plonk ourselves on some good farmland and create a farm there. And the issue is, is that because they've claimed so much land, they are so powerful. In the same way that like we think about, I don't know, maybe our parents or Gen X today buying cheap land back in the 70s or the 80s. And now the kind of wealth disparity is so huge between Gen X and millennial. Hmm. It's a similar thing, but it's on a whole other level because they're literally not buying it for anything. And they're just like, oh, this looks like some land. Mm. This will be my land. And so all these convicts that get released from doing their time in the penal colony, remember, these aren't murderers by and large. These are people like Red Kelly who stole some pigs. They have to then go and work kind of as not, I wouldn't go as far as saying as peasants, but there's an element of which you can see the kind of peasant night dynamic going on there. Mm where basically Red Kelly is working on the farm for a feudal lord, but in the 1800 sense of the word. And so Red Kelly doesn't like that very much. Mm. He tries digging for gold. Always a good fallback. Fair enough. <laughs> yep. Game's a game. <laughs> it is the gold rush in this period of history as well. So we're talking 1850s going into the 1860s. Yeah. Is that... Like, when's, like, the Eureka Stockade and stuff like that? Is that... 1854. Okay, so we're right right in the thick of that. Kind yes. Yeah. So, it's it's a really interesting time of history. Now, we didn't... You mentioned Ned Kelly channeling a bit, a bit of primary school spirit when you were, <laughs> you, you were when you were a younger man. Hmm. Did you learn about him at all in primary school? Even in the Gold Rush or anything? Yeah. There was definitely a, a lesson on bush rangers, and he was yeah. the guy... So they would it would have just been a lesson to be like this is what happened this was his armor and then you get a coloring in sheet <laughs> of a man with a bucket on yeah, his head yeah you know they tried to suppress him they tried to. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't tell us the whole truth mm. I'm pretty sure we did nothing on Ned Kelly when I was in primary school my main consciousness of, of him came from the game cricket 07 when you'd play against the Victoria Bush Rangers okay. on okay. the Sheffield Shield. Yeah. Mark Nicholas and Richie Bennett would give like a little line to like, you know, Ned Kenny yeah. and, you know, warning channeling the spirit of Ned Kelly as he stepped up the ball for Victoria. Mm. But do I you don't, think, you, I feel like in primary school though, the teachers often like, oh, it's Bush Ranger, but also he's a hero. Yeah. But. Okay. That's the big story with Ned, isn't it? Hero or villain? Mm. <laughs> Do you think it, it sort of 
Cam, do you think it kind of added to the intrigue for you that they weren't teaching it? I think like, so. I think it's like, like well, sort of around the, around the handball court, you guys like, you guys heard about this particular bush ranger. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> little library sessions, you yeah. know, <laughs> flick off playing Sibby yeah. Balls for a moment. To- <laughs> yeah. yeah, because we watch, I guess, in the our Gold Rush topic, they're looking at the time, it's like, yeah, bush ranger's bad. Like Ned Kelly, oh, legend. Mm. <laughs> but that's, that's the Australian sort of sentiment as well. And maybe for good reason. To an extent. Yeah. So... I think I learned about Bush Rangers from the TV show Wild Boys. Um, oh, it had, it starred Daniel McPherson. And the thing about Daniel McPherson is that his brother and sister went to our primary school. And so like. L McPherson? No. Oh, okay. No, different. Like, okay. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Not, yeah. While I was at school, people would often go like, oh, like, you know, it's Daniel McPherson's brother and sister right there. I have no idea who this guy was, but I'd go around <laughs> like, it's Daniel McPherson's brother and sister. <laughs> Something's being on the truth. But I really don't think I was really taught anything about Ned Kelly at school. I wonder if it's different in Victoria, considering that's where mm. we're going to be basing ourselves today. So if you are Victorian, let us know on Twitter if you have had any experiences at school learning about Ned Kelly. So what was really interesting is you've got the you've got the kind of religious divide. So you've got the Catholic Protestant divide. Now the Kellys aren't you know devout practicing Catholics by any means, but because of their kind of Irish patriotism, they have an affinity with Catholicism as a social institution rather than as a kind of devout religious practice. They feel persecuted because they have to work for these squatters that have become kind of mega wealthy by just rocking up and claiming land. And basically the kind of Kelly gang start to feel as though they are on the margins of society. So Red Kelly marries a woman called Ellen Quinn. Then they have, I believe, eight children, the third of which is Ned Kelly. Ned Kelly is the oldest boy in the family. Mm -hmm. And so basically they set up in rural Victoria and at a young age when Ned Kelly is a young teenager, he actually saves a boy's life from a flood, from kind of flash floods. And the boy falls in the river, Ned Kelly jumps in, pulls him out, saves him, and he gets given a green sash by the family, the green sash representing Ireland. So the boy's family gives him green Irish sash to kind of say, this is our token of appreciation for saving your child. It was from the family, not the not the town. No, it's, yeah, from the boys' from the family, family. Yes, cool. because it's an Irish-based town. Yeah. So kind of in the same way that like immigrant communities work today, where you know people who migrate to Australia tend to go where people from their country have been because that's they know mm. the community, they know the language, and so forth. Uh, there was a strong Irish community in a town called Abner. And presumably, it would have it would have been known as well. Like, oh, that's Ned. He saved. Yeah. The, yes. Saved yeah. little little Timmy. Now Ned was quite an athletic boy, so you know. Could have cleared five meters on the short put. Yeah. But unfortunately, he was born an era too early to succeed in rugby league oh. or AFL as because he's a Victorian. Mm. So, so you're saying that like is his whole kind of spiel just because he had all this kind of all this pent up aggression <laughs> that he couldn't take out on the rugby league field. So instead he took it out on, on the British. But yeah. What I'm saying is federation might not have happened if state of origin existed <laughs> in the hundreds. <laughs> so Ned Kelly was quite an athletic young boy. Now, Ned Kelly's first run in with the law came against a guy called Arfuk. Called what? Arfuk. Huh. I'm not spelled A H space F O O K. Uh, Arfuk was a. I feel like you. I feel um, like someone's winding you up here. I'm not pulling your leg here. He was a like Chinese pig dealer. Okay. Yeah. There. Well, speaking of powers, there's going to be a guy, a power guy that comes into the story quite soon. So basically. Uh, there's two accounts of the story. The first one is from Arfuk. And Arfuk basically says that Ned Kelly kind of came up and assaulted him and he mugged him and that Ned Kelly was acting as a young bush ranger. Ned Kelly's side of the story is that Arfuk went to Ned Kelly's sister, asked for a drink of water. Ned Kelly's sister said no, which that, I feel that part of the story gets glossed over. Why would you say <laughs> no to someone from drink of water? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's like in primary school or high school, you got the scab that's always like, oh, please give me some of your water. And they, <laughs> <laughs> they drink your whole bottle. And after that, according to Ned Kelly, our fork then assaulted Ned Kelly's sister and then Ned Kelly leapt to her defense. Mm. So we've got two accounts of the story. Mm. Ned Kelly doesn't end up being put in jail or anything like that. The reason why is that Ned Kelly's family testifies to Ned Kelly doing the honorable thing. Which, again, if you're the police, you're like, <laughs> it's pretty biased testimony, but all right, we'll play on. Yeah, but he's got, you know, he's got his green sash as well from previously. True. They, you know, he's a man of upstanding character as far as they know. 
Yes. Oh. And I, again, you also have the kind of racial prejudice at this time where there's a huge perception that the Chinese are coming in and stealing gold from British people. Yeah. So That's why he didn't get any water. Possibly. Ah, oh, true. Yeah. So because the Chinese come during the gold rush and there's huge resentment from colonial Australia um, towards the Chinese coming and perceiving to take their gold. And of course, you've got the Indigenous Australians that are just watching on, yeah. being yeah. like, what? what? <laughs> it's a bit ironic, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have Ned Kelly and Arfulk's run in. Ned Kelly gets released. No one can, can verify Arfulk's side of the story. Speaking of powers, Ned Kelly then runs in and actually gets tutored by a bush ranger. His name is Harry Power. Harry Power. Russell Crowe plays him. Really? In the, I think the later, the worse of Kelly movie. I've never, yeah, because I've never yeah, seen Russell any of the Crow. Ned Kelly movies. Yeah. Russell Crowe. Mm. Yeah, I think that's fitting. I think that's a good, I think they got that one right. Yeah. Could have got Harry Cram, but. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Power. There you go. A wily old bush ranger. Yes. Mm. So basically, Harry Power was about 50 years old at the time. Mm. Ned Kelly was in his early teens. You're probably talking 14, 15. Mm-hmm. And at about this time, we're talking 1869, 1870. And Harry Power, basically, the thing about Bush Rangers, they weren't just... His dad's, his dad's off. Yeah, his dad died about five years before. Yeah. So mm. his dad got sentenced to hard labor. He also had a huge alcohol issue. You put the two together, mm. probably died as a result of those two things. And also yeah. just living standards in the 1860s. For sure. So Ellen Quinn is now a widow. And yeah, Red Kelly, Red Kelly's died. And so Ned Kelly's got to kind of be the man of the house as well and got to provide for his family. Mm. Ellen Quinn also does some other interesting things. She illegally makes moonshine and sells it to people for, mm. you know, obviously for, to consume. So the mother and the father are very much set the standard that, look, the English are out to get us. It's okay to break the law because we're resisting mm. this immoral authority that's out to persecute us. So Ned Kelly teams up with Harry Power. And the thing about being a bush ranger is you couldn't just be a common criminal and just a common thug and just rock up and be like, hey, give me your money. Very quickly, people would come to despise bush rangers if that was the case. So you needed to actually run a bit of a PR campaign to make people think that you were doing a public service by robbing people. Mm. So that's where you get the idea of the noble bush ranger from, that you kind of have a gold cart traveling from Sydney to Melbourne and that new road is only about, what, 20, 30 years old by this point. And so along that road, you jump out, Literally just point your gun at the driver and say, give me your gold. They give you the gold, but you don't pocket all the gold. And that's the key. You're not allowed to take all of the gold that you steal from the car driver. You then go and take it and you distribute it to your Irish town or your Irish community. Mm. So then you get supporters and those supporters don't give the police any information about you. And they provide you with refuge, a place to live. Also, it's too sus if you rock up at a bank with that much gold. Mm. So you actually need to distribute it in a non-suspicious way. Robin Hood. Yes. And that's mm, literally yeah. like where the, where the comparison comes from. And that's kind of helps create the Ned Kelly myth over the kind of following 10 years after this. So like you're saying Bush Rangers, like the concept of Bush Ranger was a very Irish thing. Is it not necessarily Irish? Or did it there extend? Was, Cause you talked about distributing it to your Irish town, but you're just saying like in Kelly's context, the Irish town, but yeah. Yeah. But it was, it was broader than that. Yeah. It, it literally started from like first fleet. So okay. you've got your first, your first people who run away from the colony because they're like, stuff this. I don't want to live this life doing like heavy manual labor. Mm. I'll just go try my chances living out in the bush and then I'll come and rob any, I just, all I need is a weapon and I'll come and rob anyone who's traveling by and that can get me through. Yeah. So it is really interesting. So what actually happened was in order to combat these colonial bush rangers, you actually start seeing the colonial governments employ indigenous police because they know the bush better than the bush rangers. And so Mm -hmm. how do you combat the bush rangers? How do you actually chase these guys down that go disappear in the bush? Well, you get indigenous trackers that can actually follow the traces really well. Even seeing like one plant that is slightly bent out of position, that can be a lead as to where to go from there. Mm -hmm. So you have indigenous police that have come in to actually police the bush rangers. Mm -hmm really why and kind of the levels to the indigenous aspect of this story will get quite crazy as we move towards the crescendo of the story (laughs) so he reunites with harry power after he kind of gets out of the arthur incident but what happened is ned kelly got arrested and this was a bit of a story as well essentially what he'd done is that he delivered cow's testicles to (laughs) a wife of a person of his mate that that mate had beef with. So Ned Kelly was the, was kind of the messenger and he rocked up and said, 
here's a message. They open it up. It's cow's testicles. The guy's wife couldn't have children. And so it was kind of a message of like, you're barren. Mm -hmm. And the guy, the kind of, the husband took great offense at that, went and chased down Ned Kelly. Ned Kelly clocked him over the face with a big, don't don't argue. Okay. Whenever it comes up to a one-on-one fist fight, Ned Kelly always wins. And that's going to be a very common theme throughout the story. Did he like steal a horse or something? Yes. We're going to come on to that later. Okay. Because no that, that is also a huge scandal yep. before he becomes the notorious outlaw. Yep. So, common story though, Ned Kelly, he gets arrested and he gets given three months jail. And that's kind of the first time he actually ends up serving a proper prison sentence is for the cow's testicle incident. Wait, no, I should say bull's testicle. Cow's a female. Yeah, I think so. We're not, yeah. an, agri- we're not an agricultural podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. So there's no such thing as a male cow. Bulls are intact male cattle of any age, while the term steer refers to castrated male cattle. A heifer is a female that has not yet had a calf, and a cow is a female that has had at least one calf. We are such city boys. We wouldn't <laughs> survive a day in the country. <laughs> Imagine if we formed a gang and tried to run away from the toy police. <laughs> oh, it's too hot. <laughs> But yeah, basically, that was the first time Ned Kelly got arrested. A very interesting incident, or sorry, first time he got in prison. He got arrested a couple of times before then. Very interestingly, he actually broke up with Harry Power. What mm. happened was that Harry Power got arrested and then he was actually then charged as well um, and, and was, was sentenced to prison. Everyone thought that Ned Kelly snitched on Harry Power. So mm. Harry Power was like, you're done, you're done. We're over. And Ned Kelly was like, I didn't do it. I promise. I swear I didn't. <laughs> and no one believed him. When eventually kind of the dust settled, the news came out and it was actually Ned Kelly's uncle, a guy called Jack Lloyd, who received a 500 pounds payment from the police to inform on Harry Power. Mm, that's a lot of money. That is a huge amount of money. So Harry Power's, uh, he was, he was a big, he was a big kahuna for the police. They were, yeah, they were after him. Yeah, and he's a pretty because he's a pretty well known established bush ranger. They just needed the evidence, and so I think I'm guessing 500 pounds. I'm pretty sure if I'm, my math is correct, you, you're probably talking about 100, 150 thousand dollars Australian yeah, today. Wow. So pockets a pretty decent amount of money. Hmm. We don't know if Ned Kelly was entirely blameless. And I use the word blameless in that he, you know, collaborated with the police to get a known criminal. So I don't want to put a negative kind of connotation in the word, but. We're not going to say Ned Kelly is totally blameless in Harry Power's arrest either. There is a decent chance that earlier charges, the reason why he didn't get imprisoned until the kind of testicle incident is because he actually exchanged information about Harry Power or at least cooperated with the police in the investigation Mm. in exchange for his own charges being dropped. That's not confirmed, but there's a strong suspicion that that is potentially what happened. Anyway, Harry Power is done away with and he is now out of the story. However, Kelly has been able to learn from his old master and now the apprentice has become the master. Mm. And Ned Kelly is now officially one of the kind of better known bush rangers, so to speak, mm. because people had been talking about Harry Power's young apprentice. Yep. I guess kind of he had like some Darth Maul energy about him. <laughs> yeah, okay. He's next up. Yeah, he's uh, <laughs> yeah. star boy. Still, still pretty young, I assume. Yeah, still teenager. Yeah. Mm. So we get to 1871. This is where it gets really interesting. You mentioned a stolen horse before. Mm-hmm. So Ned Kelly, one day he's just going for a ride on his horse and he gets pulled over. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. I just love the thought. It's like you, an RBT. Just, <laughs> you, you literally are joking. It's probably exactly how it went down. <laughs> yeah. And the cop comes up to him and the cop says, sir, this looks like a horse that's been reported to have been stolen. Ned Kelly goes, no way. This is my mate, Isaiah Wright's horse. He'd lost it. I've done him a favor. I've gone out into the bush. I've tracked it down. I found it and I'm taking it back to Isaiah Wright. Go talk to him. It's his horse. The cop goes, no, this is the stolen horse. Come with me. Mm. Ned Kelly's like, no, this is Isaiah Wright's horse. They kind of get in a bit of a spat. Eventually, Ned Kelly follows him and the guy drags Ned Kelly off the horse by the neck and is leading to have grabbed Ned Kelly by the neck. At that, Ned Kelly turns around, gives him a good left, right, good night. And effectively... Uh, punches the police officer and knocks him to the ground. Mm. Police officer gets up, pulls his pulls his gun on Kelly, shoots at him three times straight in the face. The gun doesn't clock. Oh. So then Ned Kelly like, excuse me, 
bit rude. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, t- he uh, turns on the cop, puts the cop on the ground, grabs the gun and starts just whacking the cop in the head. Now, there is a crowd around at this point. At this point, the crowd, knowing that they'll be kind of pulled over the ropes for watching a cop get killed by, by uh, you know, at least a suspected criminal, they intervene, they pull Ned Kelly back, and then the cop gets up and he orders Ned Kelly to be whipped. And it's a really interesting incident because after that, Ned Kelly is sentenced to three years jail for taking a stolen horse. But not for assaulting the police officer. That goes hand in hand with it as well. Yeah, okay. Now, the police officer did try and shoot. Yeah. Mm. In the police officer's defence, he was getting punched by Ned Kelly. Mm. In Ned Kelly's defence, he was dragged, like, unnecessarily yeah. off the horse by the, by the cop. Whose horse is this? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, here's the interesting thing. It is not Isaiah Wright's horse. Oh, no. Who so would have he, thought he was capping. <laughs> he has stitched up Ned Kelly yeah. and... He forgot to mention to Ned Kelly that that horse he's lost is a horse that he actually stole. <laughs> oh, so genuinely, Ned hasn't actually stolen the horse. He's actually gone and found this horse that he's he just, believed was Isaiah Wright's horse. Yes, yeah, he's yeah. just done his mate a favour. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Oh, it's all just a big misunderstanding, guys. It is. <laughs> and so, again, try explaining that to the cop. You've just punched yeah. him. <laughs> oh, my bad. My bad, bro. It's Isaiah's fault. <laughs> Isaiah Wright gets 18 months. Hmm. He was the one who stole the horse. Yeah. Ned Kelly gets three years. And his Ned Kelly's charge was yeah. stealing a horse. That was the main one, yeah. You obviously have the scarf with the police officer, but given it's his second offence after the kind of mm. calf testicle incident, you now have Ned Kelly. They're like, nah, you're getting three years jail. Mm. Now, it's at this point that Ned Kelly really starts to feel persecuted by the Victorian police establishment. I could say that, Yeah. <laughs> It, it does, it's at a, this point, it still gives me a little bit of energy of that student in the class. Like, oh, miss hates me. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> he's the, the enemy of their own creation. Mm. Yes. Mm. And you've kind of got, like, the, the Victorian police were, yeah, extremely unpopular in particular parts of Victoria. Those parts being, like, any town that had a predominantly Irish population. Because it's like... Well, firstly, the British government took our family down here when we didn't really want to go. You made us go down here because my dad stole some pigs. Then you get all these Protestant guys that are enforcing the law against us Catholics. In the early days of New Holland, you couldn't even openly practice Catholicism um, because it was a strict Church of England society. And so they're, they're basically like, look, you are collaborators with this kind of pretty evil regime. And eventually the Irish go on to gain independence from the UK, at least the Republic of Ireland does. And so there's a lot of that sentiment that's trapped up in these towns and in these places. And Ned Kelly, even though he's not, you know, an intellectual ambassador for that pro-Irish sentiment, can't articulate, you know, his positions as well as kind of, you know, the Irish Republican activists could, he still carries that sentiment and feels that this is a British versus Irish thing going on. Anyway, I think the person he should be really angry at is not the police, but it's Isaiah Wright. Hmm. He's the one who's truly stitched him up here. So how do you settle... An issue like this. Because mm. Kelly's got some serious beef with Isaiah, right? It's like some conflict resolution <laughs> courses or something. I don't know. <laughs> like a marriage counselling kind of thing. <laughs> so a, he just wants to be heard. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't want solutions. <laughs> so a mediator. <laughs> There's no mediator. They have to settle it themselves. <laughs> what do you have? Have a duel at dawn? They have a, oh. Yeah, do they have like a boxing match in, in jail? <laughs> They do have a boxing yeah, match once they that. get released. Yeah. Like a, oh, like when a, they when they get out. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's like a, a bare knuckle boxing match that is about three years in the waiting. Mm. Damn. And again, and so he, he's in the gym, like in in the jail, just absolutely just <laughs> pumping iron, just getting ready for this big day. <laughs> Trying to get the true Geordie to like mediate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Proper like Logan Paul versus KSI fight. You know, and that's the thing so. that's killing me is we've done more of these history podcasts. It's not an original idea that they had. Firstly, you had Rupert Murdoch versus um, Ted Kennedy in... Remember the Sydney to Hobart, how they the yacht ran into... One of their yachts ran into the other yeah, ones. Yeah. And so they had to, said, we'll settle it with a boxing match. So you, wait, you got Zuckerberg versus um, Elon wait, sorry, Musk. So what What was the first one? Rupert Murdoch? Rupert Murdoch versus Ted Kennedy, the guy that owned CNN. They had a boxing match because... Well, Murdoch, yachts- Murdoch wanted a boxing match because... They will call him for it. Mur- Murdoch's yacht ran into yeah, Ted Kennedy's yeah. yacht in the city of Hobart. Yeah. Kennedy gave him a spray and Rupert Murdoch's like, right, boxing match, Ron. Yeah. That's so, that's so alpha. That, that's, <laughs> that's, that's so cool. But like, yeah, so it's like Zuckerberg and Elon, KSI, Logan Paul. Yeah. 
Yeah. KSI Joe Weller. Yeah, the original. Joe Weller, Theo Baker. Theo Baker. Um, um Murdoch, Ted Kennedy, Kelly Azara. Right, so it's, it's, it's a rich tradition, mm. but yeah. You, it would have got a lot of hype. Other people would have been talking yeah, about it yeah. for sure. And you can't say the KSI was a particular, like, particularly innovative in. <laughs> yeah. No. Kelly won. I could mm. say that. Yeah, we, you I sort of <laughs> forewarned us of that. You told us about his, his boxing prowess. Uh, Isaiah Wright then became Ned Kelly's hype man after that. So <laughs> it's like, you know the game where you play scissors? That's paper, what I was rock? just thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. If, if you've never done big scissors paper rock it's where you've got a big crowd and if you get beaten you then have to support the person who beat you en route to the top yeah so basically that's that's all right goes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, kill him. and he becomes his biggest supporter after that yeah. fair play it's a lot after boxing matches doesn't it? it's like oh mad respect man yeah. oh man so that was just genuinely how they settled it yeah and it, and it worked mm. yeah mm. so after that Ned Kelly forms a gang Yep. Mm. It's called the Greta mob. The Gre- <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, oh boy. <laughs> <I'm a fan. laughs> How dare you? <laughs> um, so why, why Greta? Where's, where's Greta? Who's Greta? Do you know how she uses the phrase, you've stolen my dreams? I think she's really playing into the, yeah, the, the, the yeah. um, now Greta's just a place in Victoria that mm. they live. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A bit, under, bit underwhelming in the end. It's like calling us. <laughs> The 2230 mob. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, basically, he forms part of the mob. He forms it with his brothers, um, Jim and Dan Kelly. Now, I feel so a bit sorry for Jim because you imagine, like, you're the you're the younger brother of the legendary Ned Kelly. It's like we've got one of the Kelly gang here. It's like, yeah, I'm I'm Jim Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. I feel like the name or like, Dan Kelly is more well known than Jim Kelly, but the name Dan Kelly still has a bit of gravitas about it okay. mm. i don't think jim kelly does yeah it's sort of the isn't that isn't there a fourth jonas brother or something that, is there that, oh frankie yes yeah yeah yes. it's a bit like a bit like that isn't it just, <laughs> just didn't get didn't get in the band um, <laughs> that is rough for that particularly because he's grown up now that fourth jonas I know, brother. it's like yeah look mom and dad i can see at the time why you haven't allowed me to join the band but <laughs> I think looking back now, I feel, <laughs> I feel a little stitched up. <laughs> Jacket people would have felt because it's like a, it's it's high school, right? So they're like the Kellys are still in high school. Mm. Jacket people would have felt excluded. Or like people would have gone to the teacher, been like, oh, "This is, I just need to let you know that the Kellys have formed a group. They didn't invite me. <laughs> I feel really left out." <laughs> no, Ned, you've got to let this person <laughs> into the Gretamore. <laughs> the Gretam. Did they even go to school? <laughs> yeah. they... School True. of hard knocks. No, he didn't actually. Yeah, no. um, like he got a basic education. School of Harry Power. Mm. Yeah. But, and, and that's interesting because as Ned Kelly becomes more famous or more infamous, he starts to try to articulate his position and try and gain political influence. Yeah. And in order to do that, you need to write quite eloquently and he can't. Mm. So he then relies on uh, one of his mates, a guy called Joe Byrne, to be his scribe and to be able to articulate it for him. So you kind of have a bit of like a, a Moses and Aaron dynamic going on mm. on there as well. But yeah, he couldn't actually, like he was popular and charismatic, but he couldn't articulate his position on pen to paper as, yeah, very, very well. So they're part of the Greta mob. We're going to fast forward to 1877. So we're now talking maybe seven years after Harry Power leaves the picture. So in 1877, Kelly gets arrested mm-hmm. for riding a horse on a footpath. Oh. <laughs> Can't do it. It is the, I guess it is the equivalent of driving Swanky. on a footpath. Or even, you're not even technically allowed to ride a bicycle on a footpath. No, um, true. So that's, yeah, but it's, it's just much, nothing's changed really. <laughs> Was he wearing a helmet? You know, that's the, that's the yeah. Problem. I wasn't, it's not like there's like a concrete path though. <laughs> Isn't everything just like dust? And- <laughs> yeah, like that implies, that implies very clearly that there's like a there's a road and there's a footpath that's separate. But surely they were just the same thing. Well, lollipop lady is a thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So basically, he's riding on the footpath, and there's two police officers. These both of these police officers are going to be incredibly important in the story now. So now we're going to actually start naming police officers. Mm. One of them is a guy called Alex Fitzpatrick. Yeah. Okay. What the name Fitzpatrick, incredibly Irish name. Mm. So he's firstly seen as a traitor by being a police officer for the kind of British colonial Victorian government. Can't, can't beat him, join him. You mm. then have another guy called Thomas Lonigan. 
Also yes. an Irish name. Mm. Now, yeah. Ned Kelly resists arrest. Who would have thought that? <laughs> and again, you can kind of say, oh, I'll ride my horse where I want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're persecuting me. They're persecuting me. <laughs> of course, uh, Miss hates me. Um, they get in a bit of, bit of a scuffle. Thomas Lonigan gives Kelly a squirrel grip. <gasps> oh, no. John Hoppawati. Yes. <laughs> ouch. Very ouch. It actually gives him a testicular issue that he carries for the rest of his life. Oh my goodness. That's uh, crazy to think how, like, at what point in this little scuffle has he gone? All right, it's, <laughs> it's time to bring out the jugular and just, yeah. <laughs> like, it's sort of. It's a two on one. You've got the numerical advantage. Yeah. You don't need a resort to that. <laughs> is, it, is it just sure rush of blood? <laughs> yeah. yeah. What, is, or is it, what is going through his head? Yeah. <laughs> now, there's a quote. That because Ned Kelly hadn't killed someone up until that point, um, there's a quote that goes something effect of like, if I ever kill someone, it'll be Lonigan. Mm. It's probably apocryphal. He probably never said that quote, mm. but he does harbor a lot of resentment towards Thomas Lonigan, particularly. And then Fitzpatrick, oh, yeah, I as could well. see how, yeah. how he would think that he grabbed, be- his, he grabbed his privates. Yeah, <laughs> he did. <laughs> I remember, like, I try to remember the first time in my life where I was told that you're not allowed to do that in a fight, like. You know how you have yeah. your, your little scuffles in like kindergarten or year one? Like it never result to like full on fists or anything, but it like. Don't go below the belt. And yeah. I, but I just like full on, this one time just went, yeah. But I can't remember the review. I'm sure I would have got rebuke yeah. for it. Like the nature of honor. But you know, like, just... what's the teacher conversation? Just like, oh, Cam, you, you just can't do that. You can't <laughs> do that. Oh. So he does, does carry a testicular issue. So. We're going to fast forward to the next little chapter. This time, like I said, Alex Fitzpatrick, Thomas Lonigan, both are going to be really important. We're going to look at Fitzpatrick first. Okay. So Fitzpatrick is in pursuit of the Kelly gang and the Greta mob. Yep. So where's he going to find the Greta mob? Greta. 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 Good. So while on the way to Greta, which is where the Kellys are kind of hiding out, a lot of them have moved out of home by this point and they kind of, you know, neither here nor there, kind of just kind of a bit, bit nomadic in terms of, their journeys along the bush, um, kind of doing robberies on carts. They rock up at Ellen Quinn's home. So the widow of Red Kelly Red and Kelly. the mother of the Kelly children. Mm. So Fitzpatrick rocks up on way to Greta just to check in and see if there's any Kellys that are there because he wants to arrest them. Oh dear. I kind of get the impression that this is a bit of a rogue solo mission. Mm. And again, this is because police did have the power to do that. It, like they, you know, with, like warrants were a thing, but there was a lot more just trust in kind of police discretion. Mm. So he rocks up at Ellen Quinn's home and there is no Dan, there is no Ned. And so he just starts having a chat with Ellen. Okay. It's like, hey, I, I am here to arrest a child, but yeah, pour me a couple while we wait. Let's uh, <laughs> now that they, because it's, um, you know, small Irish towns, everyone knows everyone. So they did know each other and they had a bit of a yarn. Dan Kelly comes back. And he is under arrest. But... It's one-on-one. Well, there's Ellen Quinn as well. Oh, dear. So it's really two-on-one. Yeah. Mm. But Dan Kelly's arrested. Okay. And Fitzpatrick says to him, all right, you're under arrest. Dan Kelly says, can I just have dinner first? <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's Taco Tuesday. Please. Yeah. Yeah. Please. <laughs> please. <Come> on, <laughs> <laughs> and Fitzpatrick says, yes. Okay. And yeah, he's enjoying, you know, enjoying his dinner. Fitzpatrick goes to, you know, say, yep, time's up. You coming with me? At that point, Ned Kelly bursts in the door and he shoots at Fitzpatrick, mm. but he misses. Oh no. From point blank range. Oh, how's he missed? Bro sucks. Fitzpatrick is shocked. Then Ellen whacks him with a, with a kitchen utensil, presumably some like, you know, iron, like strong mm. iron. So I thought utensil. Ned was arrested for what, Riding the horse on the footpath. Yeah, it wasn't it? Uh, wasn't in, in the scuffle. It was just like gay. Okay. And this is the thing. It was just play on. Kelly. Uh, would, once he got the the squirrel grip, they're like, all right, you, that's a sentence in and of itself. We'll let yes. you go. Mm-hmm. So Ellen whacked him with a kitchen utensil or probably a shovel. That's probably the other mm-hmm. alternative as well. Yeah. So, wonder how do they get the message to Ned? Because it sounds like he's gone in there like knowing. Yeah. What's happening. Okay. So there's, there's a little bit more to the story because you said. Did Ned Kelly get arrested? Yes, he got arrested frequently. But what the Kelly gang would do is the Kelly gang would often intimidate witnesses into testifying. Either that 
or the police just genuinely had it out for Ned and would frequently arrest him for bogus reasons. Truth, probably somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. So Ned Kelly rocks up. He misses from point blank range, which for a bush ranger is surprising. Then Ellen Quinn gets the shovel and whacks Fitzpatrick across the head. Fitzpatrick is then held down and at this point gets shot. And then he is told he has to remove the bullet out of himself and then come up with a cover story for how this all happened. Fitzpatrick. Wait, where'd they? So they held him down and just shot him like somewhere non fatal. Yeah. So as soon as Shovel, because Shovel was hit, hit him to stop him from pulling out his gun. Yep. And then while he was startled, they just shot him just to kind of stunt him. Mm -hmm. Then he was made to dig the bullet out of himself. And then he was told to go and come up with a cover story for why he got shot. Fitzpatrick then goes to the police and tells them everything that has happened. Mm. Yeah, crazy. Who would have thought? <laughs> so, so you they're make not... up a story. You make... <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll trust you. So they're not interested in killing him. Like, you kill a police officer, you get hung. Say, so... yeah, okay. So they know there's there's kind of a, a line they have to toe. Is that now? There's another side to the story. This is the other side of the story. Ned Kelly wasn't even there. He was 200 miles away. Mm. Mm. Fitzpatrick went to Ellen Quinn's home. He then intimidated Ellen Quinn until Dan cornered him and took him to the corner. Fitzpatrick had his gun pointed towards Dan and Dan said, look, there's Ned. Fitzpatrick <laughs> then turns and Dan takes his gun Brilliant. and shoots him and pushes him to the ground. Brilliant. Mm. That's. I reckon that's what happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, Absolutely got him. Here's the, um, the interesting thing. So three police officers gave mm. testimony supporting Fitzpatrick. Who would have thought police officers stay yeah. loyal to it? Like, yeah, yeah. police yeah. officers stay strong. Yeah. The Kellys give testimony attesting to the Kelly side of the story. Who would have thought the Kellys attest yeah. to the Kelly side of the story? What's interesting is the kind of, I guess, analysis of Fitzpatrick's body. Is the gunshot consistent with which side of the story? And there's conflicting evidence. Some medical practitioners said this is consistent with Fitzpatrick's story. Others said this looks self-inflicted. It looks like he's actually shot himself to frame the Kellys to try and get them arrested and sent away. No, I swear Ned was there. Ned was there. Yeah, was bro, there. I saw him. I literally saw him. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really interesting. And again, like if anyone wants to you know, try and solve that crime right now, good luck to you because basically it's before DNA, before CCTV or anything like it. It's purely on hearsay and whose side of the story do you believe? A really interesting bit of context, though, is that Fitzpatrick was known to have alcohol issues. Now, again, when we say alcohol issues, remember, we're talking the 1800s and an Irish community in Victoria in the 1800s. So they have to be pretty extreme to be considered alcohol <laughs> issues in that context. Mm, yeah. Now, basically, Fitzpatrick was dismissed from the police force not long afterwards for alcohol-related issues. Um, and it's widely believed by a lot of people, even in the police community at the time, that Fitz Fitzpatrick rocked up to the Kelly's house drunk. Mm. No so, one told him to go there. He was just like, oh, yeah, I'll sort this out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will solve the Kelly gang. <laughs> yeah. In one, one, I'll be a hero. Yeah, it's, it's really crazy. So the Kellys run and they flee. The only people they can get is Ellen and then two other guys that were supporters of the Kelly gang. Mm. So Ellen, who's just had a baby because she remarried to an American guy. Mm. So Ellen's just had a baby and she is sentenced to three years hard labor away from her newborn. Damn. So what was her crime? Just whacking him with the shovel. Oh, yeah. true. Yeah. I forgot about that. So, so that part, is that part not disputed? <laughs> is that? Yeah, no, that part's totally, it's totally in dispute. So oh, okay. even, even if she did, it's widely believed that that's quite extreme considering that he had a gun pointed to Dan Kelly. Yeah. And so. Yeah. Basically, like this is, he's come to her house. Mm. It's a it's a self defense move. She's not the leader of the Kelly gang. She's not the mastermind behind yeah. everything. Yeah, and she's got a newborn at home. Yeah. So this, even people that had pretty that did, weren't supportive of Ned Kelly at all or the Kelly gang, they were like, that's that's a bit ridiculous. And that's a bit extreme. Mm. And so she gets sentenced to three years, and they're using it to get to the Kelly gang. Exactly. They, mm. Yeah, they know that that will get under their skin. And basically, mm. this kind of creates the point of no return for the Kelly gang. Mm. And from this point onwards... They had to do it. They were pushed to do it. Yeah, they they've, been, they've been radicalized, yeah. really. 
Mm. Yeah, it's like the yeah, but yeah, but essentially like the police are the biggest enemy, and we can really see a shift from from Ned Kelly um, in you know his early teens and his mid teens. It was you know have a good time, yeah, stick it stick it to the to the British, make some money, have some fun while you do it, and then in the late teens he's like these guys are truly evil, mm. and we see him push to the point in every term. So Ned Kelly, Dan Kelly, and Joe Byrne, not to be confused with. Joe Burns. With Joe Burns. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so the other Kelly, the fourth Jonas brother, he's not even having a look in at this point. Was it? Was yeah, it yeah, so yeah. That- it's these are the three that the, the leave at this point. And there's gonna be another guy called Steve, not not Kelly. Just, it's just Steve. Steve will meet up with them a little bit later. Okay. So the three of them, they go into a place called the Wombat Rangers in Victoria. Basically Say that again, sorry, the The Wombat Rangers. Yep. So just the bush. Obviously, they're now wanted criminals in Victoria. Mm. So what happens is four police officers go looking for Ned and the gang. Honestly, the scene that this reminds me of, there's going to be two Breaking Bad references I'm going to give. Oh, uh, I like I like this. This one, um, um, where you have Hank, Jesse, and Walt in the middle of the desert before Uncle Jack rocks up. And then there'll be a second one, which is Ned Kelly Armored Outdoor, which I think is actually like the final scene of Breaking Bad. So, yep. so basically, you've got a bit of a situation where you've got these police officers that are going after the Kelly gang. The Kelly gang knew that they were being followed, and so they basically played a game of cat and mouse. They actually lured the police out to the Wombat Rangers, which they knew the lay of the land better than kind of these white police officers that were chasing them. And the Kelly gang were actually stalking the police officers, following them, trying to follow the Kelly gang. So it's some real 4D chess here. Mm. Eventually, we hit about 5 p.m. in the afternoon and they decide now's the time. We have the Kelly gang. They emerge from the bush and they kind of corner two police officers that had separated from the other two. One of those two police officers was Thomas Lonigan, the guy who gave Ned Kelly the squirrel grip. Uh. You're going to have to come back next week to see how this all ends. For those who can't wait. You know what to do. Click the link in the description and get yourself on Ned Kelly Armored Outlaw for only $1.99 US.